Skeletons, it is Disney Queen Skelly here, and welcome back to another Top 5 video. So this is my Top 5 Favorite Books. Now the way I do my Top 5s is 1 to 5, not 5 to 1, so deal. So, uh, my first favorite book that I would like to talk about is Collection of Edgar Allan Poe Complete Poems and Stories. So why is Edgar Allan Poe my first favorite book? Well, technically I have a complete collection of his poems and his stories. So I have like the actual poems, I have all the stories, you guys know them, Telltale Heart, um, Pit and the Pendulum, The Raven, y you guys know them. So I actually fell in love with Poe back in um, early high school. I ended up receiving that book as a Christmas gift and I figured why not I'd start reading it because in one of my classes we actually got to watch um, videos of the pit, the pit and the Pendulum, the, the Telltale Heart, and then on Netflix they had an Edgar Allan Poe movie called, um, I think, uh, Nevermore? No. It, I think it, or like, it was something. I, I remember seeing it and I clicked on it because I knew it was Edgar Allan Poe based on just the titles themselves and the whole thing was narrated by the Raven and it was such a beautiful movie that I I went back and just read my whole collection of poems and stories and I'm currently still working on it. I'm not actually done with it. Um, I finished all the poems. I think I finished one story but I have a ton more to go through and I'm super excited to read the rest of them because I want to know more than just the usual poems and stories that people know by him. So anyways, that my second favorite book is The Complete Works of William Shakespeare. Now I've been a huge fan of Shakespeare for many, 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 many years. I can't even remember when I really got into Shakespeare. Um, I remember when I was a kid, my mom would always read me Romeo and Juliet to sleep and it always knocked me out. <laughs> I loved um, Hamlet. I read some of the King Henry um, stories. I've read a lot and honestly I love Shakespeare. I've always loved Shakespeare and I, you know, despite it being old English and very interesting to understand, it's very challenging to read old English, I still somehow managed to understand what is going on in each of the stories. Though it takes me a bit of time to actually figure it out, and it's honestly okay if you need help, like, figuring out what the stories are about. Like, it took me, like, to language arts to figure out what some of these stories even meant. And I mean, the infamous Romeo and Juliet is obviously about a 17 and a 14 year old falling in love after three days and then killing themselves. I mean, come on, like, and everybody knows that. But, I mean, the rest of the Shakespeare stories is, like, you really gotta look into it, you really gotta understand what the premise of it is and I think that's why I like Shakespeare as much as I do is because his works are so challenging and they're, it's a challenge to really understand them and to know the story and to know what he's trying to portray. My third favorite story is Nevermore by Harold Chechter. Overview, historical fact and startling literary invention coverage in the stunning novel by America's principal chronicler of the great, greatest psychopathic killers. The Boston Book Review. Praised by Caleb Carr for his brilliantly detailed and, above all, riveting true crime writing. Harold Schechter brings his ex expertise to a marvelous work of fiction in rendering the 1830s Baltimore of Edgar Allan Poe. Schechter taps into the dark genius of, the, of that legendary author and follows a labyrinth path into the heart of a most heinous crime. Nevermore. He is an aspiring writer plagued by dreadful ruminations. A man whose troubled nights are haunted by dreams of his angelic cousin, Virginia. He is Edgar Allan Poe, a literary critic known for his com com uncompromising standards and scathing pen. His recently published attack on the autobiography on Colonel David Crockett, U.S. congressman and celebrated American hero, has brought the indignant frontiersman unexpected, uninvited to the chamber door of Poe's private sanctum. Neither man is prepared for where this fateful meeting will take them, on a quest for a killer through the city's highest and lowest streets and byways. In a modest boarding house, an elderly widow of sad circumstances has been found murdered by an unknown assailant. On the wall above her bed, scrawled in the victim's blood as a single cryptic word but the meaning of the chilling clue is merely one piece in a complex puzzle that ensnares the writer and the politician in a twisted and deadly game 
for the ghastly crimes, each more bizarre than the last, have only just begun. Combining the phantasmagoric voice of Poe's legendary tales with the historian's exactness, Harold Chester hovers between fact and fiction, horror and passion, destiny and doom, while conjuring historical detail with uncanny precision published in coincide with the 150th anniversary of Poe's death, Nevermore is both a tour de force of narrative suspense and a dazzling secret history of one of American literature's unique and enduring figures. So yes, we have another Poe book. Like I said, Edgar Allan Poe is just one of is my all-time favorite author. So I mean, finding a book about his life and like, not really like a, fic like a non-fiction book, but the story itself is like, it has Poe's name in it. So, I mean, with it being the story that it is, like, I love the idea of it. And, I mean, I haven't even finished reading it yet, but the first, like, couple pages really, really, really had me hooked. It was, it's been such an amazing story so far, and it's actually Hubby's book, not mine, but <laughs> yeah, I stole it anyways. I mean, he can't expect to get an Edgar Allan Poe book and then not expect me to steal it within, like, a day. <laughs> it's been a good book so far. I can't wait to actually read more into it. Um, hopefully it's still as good the more I get into it because I love mystery novels as it is, so something like this involving Edgar Allan Poe and his stories, and not to mention Davy Crockett, I mean, each layer is just adding more and more, like, beautifulness on top of it. <laughs> so my next favorite book is Trouble by Gary D. Schmidt. Summary. Schmidt's young adult novel Trouble is a tale of moral awakening written with an intricate interweaving of subplots. The central character, intermediate prep school student Henry Smith, comes from a well-to-do Massachusetts dynasty whose roots are firmly embedded in three centuries of historical America. So I'll be honest, it's been a while since I've read Trouble. I finished it, I think, back in middle school when I was a way more avid reader than I am now. But when I re read it, I, what I remember is that I just couldn't put the book down. I think I finished it in about a week. And I would really love to go back and read it again because from what I remember, it was one of the books I just couldn't put down as a kid. I mean, obviously I read like the Nancy Drew series and the Lemony Snicket series and Unfortunate Event series. However, um, Trouble was definitely one of the books that I just could not put down as a kid, especially being as young as I was. Um, a story like that, you know, you don't expect like a middle schooler to understand exactly what it is, but I did. And I mean, I remember I just, again, I couldn't put the book down. So I, that's why I ranked it my number four uh, favorite story, and I definitely want to go back and read it again just to get that sense of, like, nostalgia from when I read it as a kid. Like, I'd love to just go back and experience that all over again. My fifth favorite and final story is Hot Tamara by Mary Castillo. Summary, Tamara Contreras will never again settle for unmemorable sex. Her longtime boyfriend may look perfect to her traditional Mexican-American parents, something Tamara has never been. But at 26, she wants more from life than marriage and motherhood. So in front of everyone, Tamara does the unthinkable. She turns down her boyfriend's unexpected marriage proposal and leaves home for L.A. Tamara thinks she's got the single girl in the city thing down until she runs into Will Benavides, the former high school bad boy turned firefighter. If Tamara's parents had known how Will lit up her teenage fantasies, she'd have been shipped off to the nuns for sure. Now Will wants to make those fantasies come true permanently. When an unexpected opportunity lands in her lap and Tamara has to choose between the career and the man of her dreams, she wonders if maybe La Familia was right after all. So I'll be honest, this book that I picked as my fifth favorite book had actually been sitting in my bookshelf for a very long time. The only reason I even read it when I did was because I was leaving for the cruise with my grandparents, I believe almost two years ago now? Yeah, two years ago, I was leaving for the cruise with my grandparents and my cousin, and I wanted something to read on the plane and in the ship because I didn't know exactly what we were going to be doing. I didn't know how active we were going to be during this trip, and I wanted something to bring along with me. But I don't know why I chose such a thin book. I didn't think it'd take me as short a time to read it as it did. I actually ended up asking my grandmother if I could borrow one of her books because I read it so quickly. The book itself is actually really good. It's really good if you're like a young adult female and like and not to exclude the males out of this but it is pretty female based and if you are a young young female young adult female i really recommend reading this book it's just really well written really well described and not only that but like it's different than really what you'd expect most books to be you expect most books 
about romance to be like, oh, the guy swept her off her feet and now they're living together in harmony. But this book is just so different. So if you haven't read this book, I really recommend doing so. I'm pretty sure you could find it at uh, online to purchase or on, you know, Amazon books or whatever you guys use. But anyways, those were my top five favorite books. I really hope you guys enjoyed this top five video. Let me know what your favorite books are in the comment section down below. And who knows, maybe I'll give them a shot to read. Bye little skeletons. Stay safe. I love you guys.